Hey, what's up, guys? Ooh, this is some, some funky jazz. Anyway, if you'd like to learn a specific effect from the selection here, then you can go ahead and click on the annotations on the screen, or if you're on mobile, there'll be timestamps in the description. If you want to just watch the video, then keep on watching. Hey, what's up, guys? So I thought I would do a video explaining how I did the effects in the previous video uh, if parkour was a gaming montage. Uh, the entire reason I did that video was to actually make this one because I know there's a lot of people out there who want to know how you do these effects or at least some of them in the video and I thought I would just make a bunch of effects for that video with varying complexity so there's some really simple ones and there's some you know kind of complicated ones in there as well which you know you can practice and it will help you learn how to do visual effects and stuff so yeah I wanted to see if I could still do it like with all this visual effects and stuff and try and mix it with parkour so that's that's the whole idea with this edit oh my god that's errors everywhere jesus so many errors so let's jump straight into this uh to edit this like the video editing i used premiere pro uh which is an adobe piece of software i pay for it it's like 17 pound 50 a month or something uh, i used to get it for free actually for uni um worth asking if you are at, like a kind of an rt college or a you know uni or something if you can get it for free I don't know, they might offer it. If not, you can use HitFilm. You can achieve the same sort of effects. HitFilm, like I've mentioned before, is free and it is a such a good piece of software. Please use it. Don't use Windows Movie Maker. It's terrible. Please don't use HitFilm. It is so much better. It's essentially what After Effects is, this piece of software mixed with Premiere and it's free. Still, it's not quite as good as this and After Effects, but like the amount of stuff you can do in it's crazy. So just download that. You can still do the exact same effects in this. But if you do have Premiere and After Effects, use Premiere and After Effects because it is, it is better. So let's jump straight into it like I just said. So the first effects, the one that everyone wants to know how to do because everybody uses it in any London video, there is always this effect, which is the crazy VCR effect that I put on this where like, the colours split like green and purple and um, I mean if I actually take, uh, whoopsie, if I take this adjustment layer off the grade, there you go, that drops the purple um, but you still got this VCR effect. So how do you do it? So it's actually the most insanely easy thing to do. Now there's a way to do it with a plugin that you can pay for, there are ways to get it for free. I'm not going to tell you how to get it for free, but you know, use your brain a bit and you can you know, do some Google searching and find it. Just make sure you have a decent antivirus software like AVG or something. Yeah, anyway, you can do this with a plugin called Magic Bullet Looks. Also, that's made by Red Giant. They are an amazing, amazing plugin creator for After Effects and Premiere. And all this is, is essentially just essentially just like a color grading software so you can tweak colors and effects and stuff and it opens up this browser thing which is just like a set the program so how do you use magic bullet looks it's really easy so you have your subject camera lenses and stuff and it lets you do different effects so if i click on lens here and i go to tools it comes up with a bunch of presets so i could and i'll change the exposure on it drag that in here and then i can just turn down the exposure or up it or whatever you want oh yeah that's terrible and then you can just you know delete them and stuff so it is basically just a color grading software there's nothing too fancy about it and um, yeah i could show ctp blue on it there you go and it goes all blue and i can totally change that tint stuff and make it go crazy um but yeah you can mess around pretty good piece of software uh so the way i did it is you use this chromatic aberration so you go to lens go tools and it's right here chromatic aberration so you put that on and then all I did is you just put up the green and purple and then a bit of red and blue so all this does is split the colors in the video it makes them like the blue and purple like stretch out essentially and um, that's literally it that's all you have to do that's exactly what Stora does for their videos pretty sure that's the way everyone does it but you have to pay for this piece of software there are ways you can get it for free but say you don't want to do that how do you do it for free easy it's just a little bit time consuming so what you would do is in After Effects or if you have HitFilm you could totally do it in HitFilm there's a way of doing it uh, pretty much doing the same thing so let's just uh, one second let's just get rid of all this cool so now we got the basic piece of video Here you go nothing special about it other than it's really cool so I shot this on my FS with a 135mm prime lens like a zoom lens so you get lots of cool bokeh and it's really focused on the band of the face uh, so 
all you do is essentially you want to split the colors, right? So you want to split the video colors and stretch them out. So you would duplicate the video three times. So you've got your original video and then you've got these three up here. So I just did that with control D. So you would then go to effects and presets over here. So you type in tint and you go to tint and drag that on top video. So I was going to make it go kind of gray. So you would change the whites to bright red and then you would do the same. Let's just hide that one. You do the exact same thing to this one, change it to say blue, bottom one, green. Bam, look at that. It looks really horrible. <laughs> there you go. So you got your three different video layers. There you go. Plus still got the original one. So what you would do is you go drop it down or we press T to get to opacity and you want to change this to like 45. There you go. And you do that for the top three layers. So change this to 45, change this one to 45 say. And then you're going to want to change the position and just kind of offset it. See? Look at that. Oh my god, look it already changed. Whoa, crazy right? Insane. So difficult, but not at all. I mean obviously this is a pretty extreme version of it and you can just tweak the colours like the red's probably a bit too much. There you go. That is literally all you have to do. This looks kind of crazy, but yeah, you can tweak it until you get the right setting that you want. And there you go. There's a crazy VCR effect. Now, there are actually some advantages to doing it this way in the fact that you can um, keyframe it. So the only problem with the Magic Bullet version is that it is either just on or off. Whereas this, you could like make it sort of fade in or fade out or do whatever you want with it. Whereas the other one, you can't. Um, it's just this is a bit more time consuming. So yeah, that's how you do the VCR effect. So flipping easy. <laughs> now I will say one thing. Please, 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 if you are going to use this VCR effect, do something different with it. Do not just shove it on and make it flash and, you know, do just what everybody else does. Do something different with it. That's what I tried to do anyway. Um, you know, I just used it as like a color grade because it's all this kind of weird, I don't even know, weird, arty, dark kind of video vibe and uh, yeah, I used all these effects and tried to do something different like that's what I like about Stora when they use their effect this effect they always try and do something different with it when they like warp it around people's faces or do something like that it just looks really cool and new the next main effect how did I do these cool camera digital zooms so I didn't actually zoom the camera in when I was filming it's actually just a straight the pan of the camera um, but in the video I zoom out and then it just kind of zooms in Oosh into the next shot. How on earth do you do that? Actually pretty easy. And it's a free effect. Everyone loves free effects. So jumping back into After Effects, uh, you've got this shot of Nathaniel. Uh, boom, she zooms out. So all that is, is on this video clip. This is the original file. Um, all I did is literally just messed around with the scale. So you can see there's these keyframes here. So I started off at 120%. So the original video would be at 100%. So I zoomed in a little bit and then I just keyframed it over two frames to zoom back out to 100%. So it starts at 120 and then goes to 110 and 100. Yeah. So I did that over a couple of frames. So it's not just like a jump. It's more of like a, a zoom. Um, the thing is, you don't want to make it drag on too long as it looks kind of odd and digital. Uh, you, two frames maximum, like three or four. Uh, two frames seems to work quite well. It's like a quick little zoop, zooms in or zooms out um, and then nothing happens. And then as we go in to the next shot, Oosh, it zooms in, it looks really, really fucking cool. This is so easy to do. Uh, all you need to do, and I'm gonna give a massive shout out, is to download the Baker Easy Transitions. So there's this guy on YouTube called Baker Tuts. He's like a really great After Effects uh, tutorials guy. So this guy here, this is Baker Tuts. He does some really awesome, this is such a great video. i turn the music off though. He does some really cool skateboarding edits like this and I actually really really like his effects. And look, there you go, there's the same same zoom out effect. So they whoosh into the next shot. Really smooth, looks really slick, and it's so insanely easy to do, so it'll probably whoosh into the next shot. Uh, so he created this plugin. Uh, there's a video called Automatic Smooth Transitions. So I'll link this in the description if you want to uh, check it out. It's really awesome. It shows you how to do it as well in more detail. Uh, and you just go into the description. There's a download link for it. So 
The way you use it is you create an adjustment layer. So go layer, new adjustment layer, or hold Control Alt Y, and then you go into your effects panel, type in Baker. Once you know you've installed it, and then you just drag it on. And then all you have to do is so 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 damn easy. Is you go to the curve editor, and uh, it gives you these keyframes already, and you can just drag these about. Is make sure that the third keyframe is on the end of your first video clip. So this is the shot of Nathaniel panning over and then here is the end of it and here's the start of the next one. So I started it, bam, here. You just make sure that this third keyframe is when the next shot starts. And then all you do is I could quickly change this from a zoom in shot so it zooms into the next shot to a zoom out by going to edit scale strength and going minus 100 instead. And then I'll let it load. I'm actually just going to quickly turn the zoom blur off. And then now it zooms out into the same into the next shot. So it now zooms whoosh into the next shot instead. And it's literally that easy. That's all you have to do. It's insane. And then to make it look really smooth, you just turn on the zoom blur. Or if you've got it like spinning or rotating, you turn on rotation blur. Or if you've got it going to the left or to the up or down or to the side or whatever, you turn on directional blur. Literally that easy. Yeah. That's literally all it is. And I could make this even more dramatic. So if I want to zoom in, I could go 300%. That's going to get kind of insane. It's probably a bit too much. And it's just going to zoom right in. And then boosh, into the next shot. So you just kind of edit this scale strength to something that looks good. It doesn't have to be 100%. Actually, in some of the shots, they use like 80 or whatever. But yeah, that's how you do it. Insanely easy. So moving on, next effect. How did I do this crazy? Face, face tracking artsy stuff. Easy. Super, super easy. Well, I mean, it is getting a little bit more complicated, but it is pretty easy. So, you go into After Effects. Oh, look, this is perfect. Same video file. And uh, we're just going to get rid of the old footage. There we go. So, we've got Nathaniel here. So, what I did is I had this piece of footage and I wanted to track uh, Black Square to his face and make him move with his face. So you go Window, Workspace, actually really cool they do this now, Oop. Window, Workspace and you go to Motion Tracking and that will load up everything you need to track someone's face. So you take your footage and you go into Track Motion. Now this works by uh, selecting high contrast points. So I want to track his eyes, luckily Nathaniel is white. Um, it actually is harder if you have like a black guy because obviously their eyelashes are black and their face is black so their skin colour is black. So it's actually harder to track them because it works on contrast and obviously black and black is not very good contrast whereas white and black is high contrast. So you would essentially select this box around their eye uh, and this is just to see the maximum amount of distance this would travel within this box so it doesn't need to be that big. Um, yeah, and then I select rotation and scale because we are tracking both the rotation of his face and also the scale because it might go slightly closer to him. I hope this all makes sense. Um, this is just a really quick overview of how you do it. So I select both that and his mouth because there's no other eye to track. Usually if you can, I had a straight on shot with Ronnie at IMAX and I just track both his eyes and that made it really, really easy. So you would just track his face like this and you press go and then hopefully if you've chosen some good points it would go through and track so you go layer new create a null object i've already got one i named it nathaniel um, and then you'd edit target and apply it to that null object nathaniel i hope this all makes sense so a null object is literally just like i don't even know how to explain it it's literally just a blank thing that you can apply stuff to that you then can parent and yeah it's weird just know that you've got to apply it to that that's all I know about it and it, it works um, and then all I did was add the text kind of line it up with him when it came in so if I just type in Nathaniel still cannot spell Nathaniel see I even spell it wrong here Nathaniel <laughs> uh, I can't spell to save my life there you go so that's how it looked when it came in and then I just moved it in 3d space so I just like click this 3D box here and that turns it into 3D and then I just literally rotated it about until it looked like it was lined up with his face as though it would be in real life. So yeah, just tweak it until it looked right. And then I use this piglet tool. So you click and hold it, drag it to your null object and then that will parent it because all the null object has the tracking data of like the point here and the point here. 
And so that is going to make it stick to those points. And those points are following his face, so that's going to make it follow his face, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Um, it's kind of a little bit hard to explain. And then you just create a solid layer. So you go layer, new, whoops, layer, new, solid, or just control and Y. Yeah, hit OK. And I kind of chose like a grayish black color. You can change the color by um, when this object comes up, this box turns up. Go into color, clicking it, and you could make this red. Now you've got a red one. You know, whatever you want to do. I chose this kind of grayish, blackish one. And then I just kind of lined it up over his face like that. And I was like, yeah, that's about right. Don't want to color it too much. There you go. And um, I'll just get rid of this one. And then again, I did the same thing. I just lined it up in 3D space by, you know, just rotating it like this until it looked right. Blah, blah, blah. So I thought it looked about right. And then I did the same thing. I just parented it by using parented it to the null layer by using this little pig whippy tool by holding and dragging onto the null layer. Bam, easy. Now they're both tracked to the face. Super easy and simple. Look at that, amazing. I hope that makes sense. If you do have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section below and I'll help you out. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something. Uh, this is part one of two part series I'm going to be doing on effects. So part two will be more about sort of the complicated effects that I did in the video, like plexus and stuff like that. As long as you have a basic understanding of how After Effects works, they aren't actually that complicated and it should be something that you can learn and progress and, and will hopefully get you better at VFX. And if not, it's still a really awesome like effect to look at and, and it might inspire you to get into VFX and that sort of stuff. Anyway, if you did like this or you, or you learned something, uh, be sure to press like and subscribe and also check out the original video if parkour was a gaming montage and yeah have fun train safe and i will see you in the next adventure